Hello everyone, myself Varun Reddy and welcome to my channel called All About Planning. In today's episode of Know Your Planner, we have a special guest, Mr. Anugre, who is working as an assistant professor under the planning department of SK Bhopal. He has pursued his bachelor's in planning from Manit and then pursued his PG diploma in environmental management and later did his master's in geoinformatics from IIT Bombay. More information on all his achievements and research papers can be found in the description below. Since his specialization is in geoinformatics, today's topic of discussion will be the role of GIS in urban planning. GIS has developed rapidly over the years. How do you think it will contribute to our field in the upcoming years? Okay, first of all, Varun, thank you very much for inviting me over. Uh, regarding the question, I honestly think that there is a tremendous opportunity uh, for the use of GIS both as a tool as well as for the platform in the upcoming times. I personally feel that the uh, field of planning, particularly in the Indian context, it's witnessing challenges in three major fronts. So the first one being the monitoring and implementation part. The next one being uh, in the increasing the participatory uh, approach of the planning and the third one in the data collection and the analysis part and GIS as a tool as well as as a platform can come handy in all the three domains. It can if efficiently and very effectively improve the overall planning process and not just the planning. It will also improve uh, the urban governance as well as management process. So planning I feel is the one very small uh, subset of the overall governance or urban management structure. And as such, uh, I would also like to give you an example that, you know, all the companies, uh, major multinationals across the globe are, you know, in fierce competition against each other for grabbing the data as well as for extracting the information. You know, Facebook is continuously acquiring WhatsApp and there have been numerous other examples as well. So I, what is the basic essence behind it? The essence is to get hold of the data to derive information which can in turn make useful products which makes our life convenient and in turn increase the sales of the company. Now with the advent of uh, web 3.0 and big data I feel that you know the amount of data which the individuals can generate and can you know in the in the in this era of contributive uh, intelligence GIS can come very handy as a tool for uh, doing better planning. What are the opportunities of GIS in both urban and environmental planning? So I would like to start that off by just citing the examples. Uh, I would like to start off with environmental planning at first. So all the major thrust areas in environmental planning on the local front as well as in the global front are being extensively assisted by the use of remote sensing and GIS advancements and technologies, essentially as a tool. So. Uh, uh, I, 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 I've been reading about literature which is coming out and researches which are being conducted in the areas of marine remote sensing. Uh, we have studies in the areas of uh, uh, remote use of remote sensing in GIS in the vegetation related analysis, uh, essentially all the spatial environment above the piece of land. Uh, we also are finding the uses of GIS in cryosphere studies, that is essentially the st uh, studies concerning the areas where there is a, a like abundance of ice, say for example glaciers or cloud uh, mountain ranges or, or uh, the polar areas. So essentially use of GIS uh, uh, has got a very, like it, it not only can assist in a very comprehensive kind of study. Uh, for the environmental challenges, but it can also uh, provide a very holistical view because it gives it uh, the capability to integrate different factors. So it can be a multidisciplinary study because you know all the environmental uh, challenges which we essentially face are multidisciplinary in nature. They cannot be attributed to just one contributing factor. Essentially, all of them are due to in anthropogenic activities, but uh, the contributing factors may vary. So GIS can help us to do the environmental analysis in a better way. Regarding the urban planning scene, uh, I feel that you know that the as we are moving towards smart cities and other related phenomena, I guess the same kind of comprehensive nature and you know holistic purview can help us to address many uh, efficiency, service delivery uh, related challenges, or governance related challenges, or urban management related challenges in each of the different sectors of urban areas in a much better way. How do you connect the economic and environmental planning? That's a very interesting question. I would like to start by quoting some facts. I 
uh, as far as I remember, I think 35% of the existing population who is residing in the urban areas as on date in, in the Indian context is contributing to 65% of the national GDP. And as we are witnessing, the, you know, that the focus uh, is tremendously on the economic development or I would say the GDP development, the prominence on the concepts like smart cities, which are, you know, fo highly focused towards the urban areas are continuously on the rise. So uh, we cannot neglect the fact that we do require uh, economic development for sustaining our, you know, various needs, national as well as local. But uh, yeah having a fine balance is equally important. So far, we were not uh, that much uh, focused upon the environmental aspects. But yeah, if I, I personally feel that, you know, if the uh, economic development process can be uh, made more sustainable in terms of environmental aspects, like if we can change the approach towards this economic development by properly considering and duly considering all the factors which are in place, which concern the environmental development and uh, which, which uh, concern the trade-offs which we have to make, for the economic development, I guess we can mold uh, the course of our economic development in such a way that we can find a sort of balanced option. And I, I guess that is what uh, the, the uh, international agencies are trying to do. The recent Paris Agreement, you know, it, they have not uh, uh, provided us with a very um, uh, challenging picture as in the confrontation between the or uh, the direct confrontation between the environmental as well as economic development. But yeah, we can always change the approach, amend the approach and uh, perhaps find a more inclusive and more sustainable way for uh, nurturing our economic development, which essentially is the necessity. And that is needed too in order to mitigate the damages that has been done in the recent past. So you can just consider the global examples and uh, consider about it. What are your reasons of coming back to the field of planning and what will be your contributions and future plans in this field of planning? This is the most interesting question of this uh, interview. See, except for a few honorable exceptions, I feel that, and I have seen this over the years, I have been in, I, I enrolled in the course of Bachelor's of Planning in 2009, so it has been like fairly eight and a half years, and I've seen that except for a few honorable exceptions, it, it's not, the condition is such that planning chooses you. You are not usually the one who choose planning. So I, I went by the same route. So yeah, but I, I would like to admit and brief my story pertaining to uh, or a brief about my relationship with Bachelor's of Planning. So I enrolled in the course of Bachelor's of Planning in the year 2009. I pursued the course of four years after which I was not very much uh, through and optimistic about the approaches which are currently in practice. So, you know, I, you can say that I was essentially a Kuwait come Indak. I was not able to see the scenarios. I was not able to perceive how would the planning actually uh, contribute in the realistic terms in terms of you know all the big things which we are talking today like smart cities or or, or web 2.0 or web 3.0 data analysis machine learning and all that stuff or or to address global climatic challenges but uh, yeah uh, after my i was not very much sure about uh, pursuing my career in the same field after, at the end of my graduation but then you know uh, I, and I deliberately chose paths which were not, not at all related with the bachelors of planning or not at all related with planning uh, per se. I uh, first worked uh, a while in a real estate company, then pursued a course which was very unconventional. And I, I essentially, I was the first one from this background to enter into that stream. But uh, because of all these exposures, I also got to understand the, the, the fact which I previously mentioned that, you know, uh, it is essentially the approach with which we address the problem. So I got to know about many different uh, uh, approaches which can be included in planning. I, I pursued several uh, uh, varied courses like environmental management. I pursued a few courses from manage, uh, management stream. And with the help of all these technological advances and uh, technologies which I got to learn, I realized that no, addressing the global challenges through the route of planning by the incorporation of latest tools and technologies can be a possible path uh, uh, for making a, uh, a positive impact in the society, which is the prime uh, driver for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, do share it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you.